What's up everybody, Nathan Brown here with FC Piero and today we're here to talk about the Volkswagen DSG transmission. We're gonna go over just what a DSG transmission is in the first place, how it works, some of the common problems you might encounter and some of the advantages and disadvantages of a DSG or a dual clutch transmission. So with that, let's get to it. The DSG transmission came out in around 2005-ish. Uh, it actually was first introduced in the US market uh, on the Audi TT, and it was kind of a, a, a big question mark at the time. You know, Volkswagen Audi, for better or for worse, is not really known for having the best automatic transmissions back then. And when the DSG came out, it was a big question mark. Is this thing any good? How does it work? Is it gonna be just another expensive to repair, unreliable automatic Volkswagen? And pleasantly, uh, it turned out to be quite the opposite. Um, the dual clutch DSG transmissions are fantastic. They work really, really well. And they've really kind of transformed uh, the performance market when it comes to what you can do with a lot of these cars. Uh, once it came out in Volkswagen, it was available uh, on the Mark V platform, the GLI, GTI, and of course the uh, TDI models. So all of that is great. But what is a DSG transmission? How does it actually work? Well, we're gonna get into that today. So to understand a DSG, you kinda need to know a little bit about how a manual transmission works. It's pretty straightforward. You essentially have your power coming out of your engine uh, through your crankshaft that's connected to a flywheel. There's a clutch disc that's connected to the input shaft on the transmission. And there's a pressure plate that physically presses that clutch disc against the flywheel. Of course, when you put your foot on the clutch, that releases the pressure plate and of course disconnects the transmission from the engine, allowing you to shift gears with your gear lever. It's a pretty good system. It works really, really well. Uh, it has its limitations in terms of how quickly you can shift, how smoothly you can shift, and a lot of that comes down to the driver. And of course, the clutch is a wear item. It does wear out over time. So the automatic transmission kind of removes a lot of those variables. A traditional automatic is going to remove the clutch. It's a two pedal car. And essentially you have the transmission doing all of your thinking and shifting for you. So you still have, of course, your engine power that's coming from the crankshaft, but rather than a clutch, you have what's called a torque converter. The torque converter is connected to a flex plate, which is essentially the same thing as a flywheel. And the torque converter is filled with fluid. So the automatic transmission fluid is a hydraulic fluid and the pressure is controlled by a pump uh, that is inside the transmission. It's gear driven. So basically once you start the engine and the transmission's moving, that pump can supply pressure. In a modern automatic transmission, you have a computer or a transmission control unit that has solenoids and that essentially is the gatekeeper that opens and closes the different valves to apply the pressure to different gears. When you begin to accelerate, the pressure will build in the torque converter. It will start to connect to the transmission input shaft and then the TCM or the uh, transmission valve body will make the decision about gear selection and things like that. It's a great system, it works really well, um, but it, since it is all fluid filled and because it's essentially working off of hydraulic pressure, there's a lot of lag. So the way the transmission shifts, it has these bands and clutches inside and all of it is, is controlled by hydraulic fluid pressure. It's smooth, it is easy to drive, but you don't get a lot of control. There's not a really connected feeling between the engine and the transmission. So one of the popularized sort of slang terms for an automatic or a traditional auto automatic is a slush box because it really feels slushy and disconnected and like there's not really a, a lot going on. So because of all that, an automatic, while great for drag racing, for pretty much any other performance application is not very popular. Uh, and this is kind of where the dual clutch transmission comes in. So a dual clutch transmission or a DSG, as we're talking about today, really combines the best of both worlds. It combines a lot of the traits of the automatic along with the better performance and direct connection of the manual transmission. So the way that a DSG transmission combines an automatic and a manual transmission into one is that a DSG really is two manual transmissions built into one unit with a computer controlling everything that's going on. Very, very simply, it has two different clutches, has two different input shafts, and has two stacks of gears. One set of clutches is connected to the even gears, so like two, four, six, and the other clutches are connected to the odd gears, like one, three, and five. The computer will 
decide when and how to engage those clutches, and it decides when to make a shift. And it will essentially look at a ton of different info um, to determine what gear to select next. So if you're accelerating in third gear, it's gonna assume you're gonna go to fourth, it'll pre-select fourth gear, and as soon as it's ready to shift, it'll make that shift and you will not be able to tell the difference. It's very seamless, it's very smooth, uh, but it's also very, very fast. Likewise, when you're going to slow down, it will pre-select the next lower gear uh, and it will downshift to that as you hit the brakes. Now, that can present some problems. Uh, if you've driven a DSG, especially an older one, you may notice they may kind of like balk on a shift or shift hard every once in a while. And that's because you do have to be a little bit intentional with your, uh, your inputs for lack of a better term. You know, the transmission still has to shift the gears. And although it can do it very, very quickly, it still has to shift from you know, first to second or pre-select third down to first or whatever it might be. So it does take time to do that. So if you get on the gas and then off the gas and then on the gas and off the gas, the computer is constantly trying to guess what you're going to do next. So it can result in a little bit of a hard shift, but ultimately uh, it's a very, very simple and smooth process. So your average DSG transmission is going to have a standard drive mode. It'll have a sport mode, which usually means it's going to hold the gear longer, downshift more quickly or shift more quickly, things like that. And most will also have a full manual mode. And in a manual mode, you can either shift the gears by flappy paddles on the steering wheel, or you can shift it using the gear lever itself. So lightning fast shifts and seamless power delivery obviously adds up to a big performance advantage over a manual when you're accelerating. If you have the same car with the same power, manual to DSG, you might see two, three, maybe even four tenths of a second better performance going to 60 miles an hour or maybe down the drag strip compared to the manual version. Um, with that in mind, there's a lot of really, really high performance cars out there these days running DSG transmissions that uh, just absolutely decimate it. So you've got RS3s, you have TTRSs, uh, and a bunch of other cars out there um, that are really great drag cars, and a lot of their advantage comes down to the DSG transmission. So all dual clutch transmissions generally tend to have a pretty similar design. So that includes the DSG for Volkswagen, the S-Tronic for Audi, and also the PDK for Porsche and DCT for BMW. Uh, the biggest thing that really sets these tr different transmissions apart tends to be the software. So you have a GT3 supercar from Porsche that uses a dual clutch PDK versus your average you know, TDI commuter car from Volkswagen. The components are pretty much the same. It's the software that really sets it apart in terms of how how it performs, makes its gear change decisions, and how quickly it changes gears. So ultimately, all dual clutch transmissions are pretty similar. That The software really kind of sets one apart from the next in terms of the refinement and the performance. So with that said, let's get into some of the inner workings of the DSG, like what's actually going on. So as I mentioned, a DSG transmission does have a clutch system in it very much like a manual. The difference is that most DSGs or dual clutch transmissions have a wet clutch design, which means that the clutches are lubricated by the transmission oil that also goes through the rest of the transmission. This has some advantages. Uh, primarily, it helps to cool them. It also helps to minimize wear, which means that ultimately your DSG clutch pack will last quite a long time as long as you do your normal services and things like that. So you have all the advantages of a manual transmission with direct connection, you know, performance advantage and no real loss of power, uh, along with the advantages of an automatic transmission where you essentially have seamless power delivery and you don't have to worry about using a clutch. So with the automatic, aside from the disconnected feeling that you get, there's also a pretty significant loss of power. So basically what that means is regardless of what your engine is producing, less actual horsepower is getting to the ground, uh, which obviously for a performance application is less than ideal. So now that we've talked a little bit about how the DSG works, you would think that it is all flowers and sunshine. It's the best thing ever. It doesn't have any problems. And you're kind of right and kind of wrong. It certainly has a lot of advantages, but it does have a few disadvantages. Um, one of the major advantages is that unlike all the other automatics that Volkswagen Audi had produced up to that point, the DSG is really reliable. Um, you do need to do some fluid and filter changes. Those are usually required about 35 or 40,000 miles, depending upon your car and how you use it. Um, but that is pretty much it. Um, provided that you do those changes, the life of the components, be it the clutches or the synchros or the gear internals or anything like that, generally tends to last quite a long time. Uh, another big advantage is power holding. The DSG transmission has proved to be exceptionally good at holding power increases. So 
if you're tuning your car, you can tune your transmission to match and you can actually get quite a bit more power holding out of the factory system, factory clutches, just with a software change. One of the biggest advantages of the DSG transmission is its tunability. Um, so when you are tuning your engine ECU, you can also tune the TCU for better performance. And, and it's really recommended. Ultimately, your TCU is making all of its decisions based on a factory power output. So if you increase the power without changing your TCU tuning, it can sometimes result in some harder shifting and things like that. If you tune your TCU to match, ultimately you get better performance. But what does tuning the TCU actually mean? Basically, you're putting new software on the transmission control unit that determines how the car shifts and drives and acts. Um, ultimately, what this means is it might hold gears longer for a more natural kind of uh, driving experience and drive. Uh, it will generally shift quicker, um, whether that's in the manual mode, the sport mode, or just when you're pushing your foot down further and knows you're trying to accelerate fast and it will make that quicker shift. Um, a lot of that really just comes down to fine tuning uh, all the little ones and zeros running around inside the computer, uh, deciding how it's going to do what it's going to do. Um, with the Performance Tune, not only do you get faster shifting, uh, but you typically will also get a much higher power holding. Uh, and that comes down to increasing the clamping load or the hydraulic pressure that goes to the clutches. Um, this doesn't really result in any additional wear. It doesn't really result in any additional tear. Uh, um, you should still follow your, your general factory uh, services. And ultimately, you get really great performances without too much trouble. Your average Volkswagen or Audi, when you put it into the manual mode, it will still downshift automatically. But with a performance tune, you can usually tune that out so you can truly drive the car like a race car. Speaking of which, the DSG transmission is actually good enough that Volkswagen has used it in its race cars all the way back to 2006 when it first came out. So you've got the Golf 5 VLN R-Line car that they placed eighth overall, I think, in the 24 Hours of the Nürburgring in 2007. Uh, you've got the Scirocco N24. And of course, you have countless DSG TCR cars out there in both Audi and Volkswagen. The cool thing about all this is it is literally the same transmission that you have in your streetcar that is in that race car. Yeah, they have different software, but as I mentioned, that's easy to tune. Um, but ultimately, you have a super reliable, super fast shifting race car transmission available for use in a streetcar. And that's really, really cool. So if you have a DSG and you've tuned your car, you may be wondering if you need to replace your clutch packs at any point in time. And generally, the answer is no. Uh, with performance tuning, the power holding the transmission is more than enough for most road course driving, autocross, street driving, and things like that. If you make monster power and you're going to the drag strip all the time, that's where you need to start thinking about upgrading your clutches from the Vol factory Volkswagen units. Ultimately, the factory ones have really good power holding, uh, even up to some pretty substantial power levels. So obviously, we've talked about a lot of those advantages, but there are a few disadvantages. Um, some you can kind of count on to be fairly common and some not so much. Probably the most common problem you're going to encounter on any DSG transmission is probably down to the flywheel. It's one of the only real wear items on that transmission setup that you're gonna have to plan on replacing at some point. It's a dual mass flywheel, so it does have two different components inside there, two different uh, items that kind of move, uh, and they can wear, they can go out of balance and things like that. When this starts to happen, you'll probably have a couple things that you'll notice. One, it'll probably start to shift harder um, from one gear to the next. The other is that it may occasionally actually fail to engage the gear as you start off the car. So it might sort of like, you give it gas, it's not going anywhere, and then bam, it'll slam into first gear. Those are kind of indications that it's starting to go bad. There are also indications of something else, but I'll, I'll get into that later. Um, the main thing that you need to watch out for if your DSG flywheel is failing is it'll begin to vibrate, and it'll begin to vibrate quite a lot. And in an ultimate failure, it will actually start to make contact inside the bell housing and start to break stuff. So that flywheel is one of the only things you really have to plan on. The flywheel itself is a little expensive. It's not horrible. Of course, we do have them on the website. Um, and the transmission does have to come out to replace that. So it is a fairly big job. And that does get into actually into one of the disadvantages of the DSG, and that is that it is fairly heavy. Um, so if you're talking about doing a DIY, um, it's certainly something that uh, you would need to have a couple friends around uh, or a proper transmission jack to, to perform that service. So if you neglect your, your DSG car, 
If you are not doing your services or you're, you're not replacing your flywheel when it needs to, to be replaced, uh, you may end up damaging the clutches. So the clutches, as I mentioned, are lubricated by the same fluid that goes through the rest of the transmission. And every time that it's engaging a gear, every time that the clutch is engaging or disengaging, a little tiny bit of friction material wears off and that gets dispersed into the fluid. Uh, there's a filter there that's gonna capture that, but eventually the filter will get loaded up and you'll have more and more and more of these particles and they'll begin to wear the clutches more quickly. Now, if you change your fluid, it would be surprising ultimately, uh, even with heavy use to need to change your clutches under 150,000 miles, 200,000 miles, 250,000 miles. Um, you know, I've had customers at my old job that, you know, had 30, 40, 50,000 miles of track miles on their DSG cars um, and had no problems because they stayed up on their service and they performed flawlessly. So you've heard me mention multiple times about how important it is to service your DSG transmission. What that really means is replacing the fluid and the filter every 35 to 40,000 miles. We have several different kits available on the website that range from being fairly basic, that includes just a, a pump that you put into the bottle of fluid, to a complete pressurized unit that really kind of speeds up the process of refilling the transmission. Uh, now, like a lot of automatics, you actually do have to have um, the transmission fluid level set with it uh, operating at a certain temperature. We do have some DIYs on this uh, on both YouTube and on our blog. So check, definitely check those out um, for information on how to service your, your car. It's pretty straightforward. It's definitely something you can do yourself. And by keeping up on your DSG services, you're gonna have a really long life and probably no problems out of your car. Aside from the clutches and the flywheel, the other major component that can fail in the DSG and give you some serious headaches is the mechatronic unit itself. Now, generally, like everything else on the DSG, these have been pretty reliable, but there were some years where there were some significant problems. Uh, I believe in the late 2000s, 08, 09, there was a recall of sorts. Uh, I know some of the R32s generally tended to have some problems more often than others. Uh, and the level of problem your mechatronic unit might have will really depend. And it can range from anything uh, where the transmission's hard to shift or it's delaying gears or it's not engaging off a start to completely disconnecting from the transmission and giving you absolutely no forward drive. That's where that recall came into play. Basically, people would be driving down the highway, their transmission would freak out because the uh, mechatronic unit was bad. It would flash at them and they would disconnect drive and they would be on the highway with zero drive to the wheels. So obviously that's a real hazard and there was a recall about that. That said, it's extremely rare. Uh, all the units that would have been around back then should have been taken care of by now. And you know, I have a DSG transmission car. I know tons of people that have DSG transmission cars. And as long as you keep up on your service, they're remarkably good. So although you have to worry about the mechatronic unit maybe failing at some point, it is fairly rare. If it does fail, um, you have a couple different options. The most popular one is probably just to swap a complete new used transmission, or new if you're really spendy, uh, into the car. Or you can replace just the mechatronic unit. Um, most of these are fairly interchangeable, but you do need to make sure you have the correct coding and the correct box code. Um, and there are some, some differences generation to generation. So all the core gearbox is pretty similar. Uh, the, the mechatronic units are specific, so you do need to make sure you choose the right one. So very quickly, I'll get uh, a little bit nerdy and we're gonna go through some of the specific DSG transmissions, the codes, and some of the advantages or maybe disadvantages of some of the different DSG models. The DQ250 is gonna be your most common and kind of the grandfather model uh, of all DSGs. Sometimes you'll also see it referred to as the O2E, um, which is one of the part numbers that kind of references that transmission. Uh, the DQ250 is the workhorse. It's the six speed. It came in the Mark V, it came in the Audi TT, it came in the Mark VI, uh, and of course the Mark VII, GTI, and Golf R. It's used throughout Volkswagen's lineup uh, and all the transverse layout Audis, uh, and it works really, really well. It is the same transmissions that's used in the TCR race cars, and it's very, very robust. It shifts quickly, uh, and it really, in my opinion, is probably one of the better uh, options out there if you're a track junkie or something like that. Uh, it's very tunable, very robust. Um, there are aftermarket coolers and all kinds of, uh, you know, parts you can throw on the, the DQ250 uh, to make it perform better on track. Um, so if you're kind of trying to build your own TCR car, that's, that's the transmission you want to use. 
The DQ250 transmission is rated for 295 pounds-feet of torque from the factory, but with a performance tune is capable of holding much, much more. Somewhere in the range of 400, even 500 pounds-feet of torque is possible with a performance tune and no other changes. Aside from the DQ250, on the transverse Audis, you have the DQ500. The DQ500 is only used on the five-cylinder Audi RS3 and TTRS. Uh, it is a seven-speed version. It's proven to be very, very robust and stout in those applications. And those are usually the cars that you'll see ripping down the drag strip, um, all with that factory transmission. And it probably has some special clutches and stuff like that for the really extreme cars. Even with some mild tuning though, it's an awesome drag strip transmission. As you would expect, since it's matched to a more powerful five cylinder turbo engine, the DQ500 is rated to a higher torque spec from the factory. It's rated to 442 foot pounds, and of course is capable of holding much, much more power with a performance tune. It's not surprising or unusual to see an engine producing somewhere around 600 pounds feet of torque to be matched with that and no other changes to the factory parts. Moving on, we get to the DQ381, which is essentially the four cylinder version of the DQ500. Similarly, it is a seven speed transverse transmission. Uh, and this one was introduced on the Volkswagen Golf R in 2018 and the GTI in 2019. Uh, now the seven speed made for some pretty significant changes uh, compared to the six speed in this particular application. Uh, it feels a little more like a traditional automatic. So for me, I, I honestly don't prefer it quite as much. Uh, it's very slippy. It tends to feel a little more lazy between gears and things like that. And it's not to say that it's a bad transmission, but ultimately, as I mentioned before, if you're looking to do performance driving and performance tuning, the six speed does seem to be a little bit better. Um, I actually owned a car that had a seven speed DSG in it. And ultimately I sold it mainly because I didn't like how it drove. I bought the car expecting it to feel like one of the older six speed cars and it just didn't. And, and that bothered me. Um, that's not to say it's a bad transmission. Uh, it's still worked very, very well. And it still did all the things that you would expect a DSG to do. It just felt a little softer. Um, it's very, very smooth and very, very drivable though. Um, I just wanted something that felt a little more like I was expecting, I guess. Uh, outside of that though, uh, since it is a seven speed, it has a very, very tall seven speed gear, uh, or it has very tall gearing, I guess, is a better way to say that. What that means ultimately is that you can get exceptionally good gas mileage with one of the seven speed DSG cars. So if you're looking to get a car that performs really, really well, but also gets exceptional gas mileage, one of those versions of the uh, DSGs might be the right choice for you. Uh, and my car, it was a GTI, I got as high as 39 or 40 miles per gallon on some longer road trips, which in a car that performs as well as that does is honestly pretty amazing. Um, so it's not a bad choice. It's just not as good of a choice for performance. All of that said, uh, it does have a little bit higher torque holding uh, than the DQ50 does from the factory. It is rated for 317 pounds feet of torque. And of course it is tunable uh, to hold a little bit more. Since we're talking about more power holding and tuning, you might ask yourself, can I just tune this, this transmission to feel like one of the older ones, to be a little bit sharper? And the short answer is that you can, but it's not gonna be able to get quite to that same level. Um, one of the major reasons for this is that they changed the shift logic on the DQ381 to being vehicle speed based versus engine speed based. And I, this is an opinion, but I think that has a lot to do with why it feels different in terms of how it shifts, when it shifts and things like that. Um, so yes, you can tune it. Um, they're still kind of figuring out some of the nuance from some of the companies and things like that. It's a very, very new item compared to the DQ250, which has been around for almost 15 years at this point. Um, but you know, it, it's something that they're working on and I'm sure that it'll probably get better uh, in the years to come. Up to this point, we've been talking about the DQ series transmissions that come on the transverse Volkswagen and Audi models. So now we're gonna move over to the, the longitudinal versions uh, that come in the S4, S5, and S6. Uh, the most common transmission there is gonna be the DL501. Uh, this is very, very similar to the DQ250 and the other transmissions we've talked about in terms of the layout and kind of how it works. The biggest difference is that it has a separated oiling circuit, uh, which is designed to provide a little bit better longevity, but ultimately they work the same way and have a lot of the same advantages. Uh, just like the uh, transverse versions, they're a great performance transmission and they're very, very popular on the drag strip. So when you see a lot of the S4s and things like that going for their ultimate best uh, time down the drag strip, a lot of those cars are gonna be equipped with the DL501 transmission. 
So lastly, we'll jump over to the supercar uh, that comes from Audi. That's the Audi R8 5.2 V10 and the DL800. The DL800 is a transmission that only comes on the Audi R8 uh, and it operates just like every other dual clutch transmission that we've talked about up to this point. Just like the DQ250, it is also used in the racing version of the Audi R8. That's the Audi R8 GT4. Um, so once again, it's really, really impressive to see that you essentially have a stock transmission available for use for an everyday driver that is so good that they decide to use it in their race cars and their customer racing programs. Um, you know, the fact that any of these things can be used in a race car and last as long as 24 hours really speaks to the engineering and the level of quality uh, that really goes into these transmissions. And it really is, it's why they're such a good choice uh, for performance use or daily use, uh, no matter what you drive. So we've kind of gone on this journey. We've gone really, really in depth on the DSG transmissions and talked about all the reasons that they're great, talked about some of the problems that they have, but there is one elephant in the room and that is DSG farts. I hate saying the word. Uh, Legitimately though, it is something that people tend to love. And if you go on YouTube, you're gonna find tons of clips of people recording and putting together compilations of cars with DSG farts. So what is that noise? What is it doing? Uh, basically, like any other racing transmission, when you shift gears, there's a kind of a pop that happens in between those gears. In a DSG transmission, what it is, is the e engine ECU is pulling timing out of the, the engine while the transmission is making the shift. They always make this noise, and if you have a factory car, even with a stock exhaust, you can still hear it happen. It's, it's there, it's kind of quiet, but it's definitely there. As you open up the exhaust, you get a free flow cat, downpipe, no exhaust, straight pipe, whatever it is, the more free flowing the exhaust, the louder that crack is. Um, so like our DSG transmissions, when our TCRs were equipped with those, every time you change that gear, you hear that DSG fart. Again, I hate saying the word, I think it's dumb, but it's kind of one of the better ways to describe it, I guess, and it's the popularized term, so we're gonna go ahead and use it. Um, so are DSG farts good or bad, yes or no? They're kind of fun, I've got to admit. I mean, because you're driving down the road, you're making those gear changes, and you feel like you're driving a race car. And who doesn't want to feel like they're driving a race car pretty much all the time? That might just be me and a couple other people that work here, actually, but we're also a little bit crazy. So with that, I'll kick it over to you guys. DSG farts, yes or no? Do you like them or do you not? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, likewise, if you have any questions or anything that I didn't touch on or you want a little bit more explanation on, let us know in the comments. Um, hopefully you've made it to the end of the video or thank you for making it to the end of the video if you've made it this far. Uh, and of course, if you've enjoyed it, please hit a like uh, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Uh, and with that, we'll see you on the next one. Oh yeah, dude, that was a really good conclusion. That was. Damn, Nate Brown. <laughs>